Welcome to 3D Flow Academy. This episode is focused on texture generation using custom UVs. When exporting the final mesh generated in 3DF Zephyr, you'll get a texture that makes sense for a computer, but less for a human, which probably would like to paint over the texture in its favorite software, like Photoshop or GIMP, or for better texture space and scenes management. The goal of this tutorial is to define our custom UV mapping so that Zephyr can use those to regenerate the texture. UV mapping is the process of projecting a 2D image to a 3D model's surface for texture mapping. If this is something you are not familiar with, you may want to pause this video and research this topic. You'll find a few links in the description below and it's worth the 10 minutes reading. The first step is to export your mesh from Zephyr and save it to a temporary location. For this tutorial we'll use Blender. Any other 3D modeling software can be used with the same principles. Import the 3D model in the Blender workspace from the File Import menu. Remember you can set the origin of the mesh to 0, 0, 0 directly in Zephyr using control points if you're using Zephyr Pro or Arial. If the mesh is not centered, remember you can change the local rendering system in most 3D editors. While you are in Edit mode, use Ctrl Tab to bring up the Selection Mode menu and select Edge. Use right click and Ctrl plus right click to select the seams. Keep selecting edges until you're happy with your defined seam. Use Ctrl plus E and select Mark Seams when you're happy with the defined seam. UV mapping is a skill itself, as you'll have to figure out where to place the seams according to your needs for that specific model. Repeat the same steps in order to define the remaining seams until you're happy with your selection. You can use Blender's UV map editor if you wish for more control. Press A to select all faces and then select Unwrap from the Shading UVs tab after we have finished placing seams. Blender will unwrap automatically the mesh for you. Blender offers several ways of mapping UVs. Please refer to the documentation of your preferred editor in order to understand the best UV mapping method for you. After Blender has finished processing, save the UV mapped mesh on your computer to a temporary location. Back into Zephyr, simply click on the Import menu and click Import Mesh with UV Map. The Import Mesh with known UV Maps window will appear. Simply click Select Mesh File and select your previously created mesh with your custom UV Map. After the mesh has been loaded successfully, the texture options will activate and you'll be able to select the parameters that the new texture mesh will use. When ready, click Import in Workspace. Zephyr will regenerate the texture accordingly to the specified UV mapping and the new mesh with set texture will appear in the workspace like any other textured mesh. At this point, you can safely export it again or use it as a normal textured mesh in the Zephyr workspace. UV mapped textures are extremely useful especially for artists. Depending on the projected geometry, you can flatter the texture to a point where you can paint directly on it. This same process can be done in any other 3D modeling software, like for example ZBrush, Maya, 3D Coat or 3D Studio Max. Make sure to use this function. If you simply drag and drop the mesh, Zephyr will import it in the workspace but will not use your custom UVs. Let's see a couple of tricks. Blender and other software may have a different app axis from Zephyr's default, thus showing our mesh rotated. Although this is just a rendering issue, remember that you can change the app axis directly within Zephyr. Just remember to straighten up your model after you've changed the app axis in Zephyr. You can do it very quickly using the Define App Axis tools. However, do not move the mesh inside Blender. You can safely use tools to edit geometry if you wish. This is an optional step. Since I'm not a proficient 3D modeler, I'll stick to the basic knife tool. There are probably better ways to split the mesh, for example the bisect tool. Unselect everything by tapping the A key after entering the edit mode. To use the knife tool while in edit mode, press key, then Z, and then confirm using space. The Z modifier is used to force a cut through. Press W, then select Subdivide. Make sure to select Fan as a subdivision mode. After the cut and subdivision, press Ctrl plus E and then select Edge Split. Use once again Ctrl Tab to enter Face Selection mode. Right click any face and select the connected faces to it by pressing L. Use the Delete key to delete the selection. In this case, 
I'm now repeating the above steps to have a neat cut on the full mesh border. When you're done with mesh cleaning, use Ctrl Tab again to enter vertex selection mode. Select a vertex using right click and all its linked vertices using L. Use Ctrl plus I to invert the selection so that we can remove any rogue vertices that may be left using Delete. Feel free to use other in Blender tool. For example, the Sculpt tool is pretty handy for mesh cleanup and to add details. After editing, the mesh may now have quads, so we'll have to triangulate any leftover. Select all faces and from the mesh menu select Triangulate Faces. Please note that in the near future Zephyr will also support quads, but for the time being, please use triangles only. Sometimes you can rely on the automatic unwrap function offered by Blender without having to manually place seams. It's suggested, however, that you learn to place seams and manually unwrap for best results. In this example, I use the automatic unwrap function. Although on a first look it looks decent enough, you can immediately see that there is a lot of wasted UV space. As of version 3.702, please note that it is mandatory to select a bogus texture in the material, in order to import multiple textures and materials inside Zephyr. Remember to always double check your unwrapping settings. If you're using multiple textures and materials, it's easy to forget to unwrap part of a mesh, which would result in missing textures inside Zephyr. In this case, I forgot to assign a texture and material to the mane of the lion's head. Thank you for watching and don't forget to join our 3D Flow Academy Facebook group in order to vote for the next video tutorial.